Hail Freya, Lady of Love, Phonic Goddess of Passion. You teach us to love without fear, without regret. Beautiful Lady of Brisingaman, sharing your passion on your own terms. You will not be used as a pawn in the game for the gods. We thank you for showing us that our love can be freely given, and that the judgments of others matter little in matters of the heart. Eagle-clad goddess of both the cat and the boar, we thank you for showing us the strength of passion. Hail Freya! So once again, this is a reading from the God's Own County, a book of heathen prayers. I read this at the beginning of the Honoring Thor video as well. But welcome to the third and final episode in Freya's Week. I'm so excited for you to have joined me for all three of these episodes, if you have. And I'm excited to talk about the less heavy subject of the actual honoring and venerating of this goddess um, in our modern age. So much like the Honoring Thor video, this video is going to have several parts and sections mixed in throughout, um, but right now I do want to talk about how I have experienced Freya in the past year or so because I actually didn't experience her right away. Um, my first Freya video is available on this channel as well where I actually had a very incredible experience and it was very similar to Odin in the sense that I didn't expect it. I wasn't really looking to communicate with Freya and then all of a sudden she just kind of entered my life. Um, so I do have that video as well um, on this channel if you'd like to check it out. Um, but as far as where I am now, I've actually been working with Freya pretty much all this year, um, which has actually been very hard for me to break away from Odin's specific worship. Um, while I have, you know, given many offerings to various deities, Odin was always that primary one. Um, and it has not really been until Freya that I finally was able to move on and not only not feel like I was letting Odin down or not feel like I was, you know, dishonoring him by, you know, focusing on another deity. So obviously with her, it's a little bit more magic base it's a little bit more shamanic um there's obviously the side of love um the side of you know being a mother there's the side of the cat the animal um, there's so much going on with freya that it you know there's so much to talk about as you may have seen in the research video we also have a decent amount of information about her it's not a lot um but you know there still is a good amount so just like in the Honoring Thor video, I'm going to be reading you stories from the community that I believe kind of encapsulate a lot of what people experience when it comes to worshiping and honoring Freya. So I'm going to share three stories throughout this video, and the first story is going to be from Madison. I had a moving experience with Freya before I became a Norse pagan, and looking back, I definitely believe it was her. I was driving down a road in the country surrounded by lush green forest on both sides of the road. I saw a shadow looming over my windshield and a beautiful falcon was racing me right above my car. In that moment I felt truly connected with the earth and with Freya. I was at a loss for words and will always cherish that memory throughout my journey on this path. Skull. So I wanted to share this journey because I've had something fairly similar. Um, the first time I actually ever felt connected to Freya, um, I saw a, it was either a falcon or a hawk, like literally watched it like grab a squirrel and go into a tree and start eating it. And also at the time of this experience, I saw honeybees around a beautiful little pond that had orchids and lilies growing out of it. And so experiencing the natural world when it comes to Freya, I think is something that is quite common, uh, but not just the natural world, but the world of like the majestic beautiful but also dangerous you know falcons and hawks are beautiful creatures but also they you know are they are designed to kill the same thing with cats you know cats are designed to you know cats are adorable but also if you've ever watched a cat kill something they are quite malicious um, and then like the idea of a honeybee is something that of course I don't think I have written down anywhere but something that I have experienced that I've shared with others that seems to make sense the idea of the queen bee the idea of making honey Freya's golden tears maybe that's honey so they're definitely seems to be a connection there but I wanted to share that story with you um, because there it does definitely seem to be a tie between Freya and the natural beauty of the world so there's a few different aspects of Freya to connect with but the primary ones I have actually sought out are the magic side um, you know exploring deeper into the, the the well of magic so to speak and then the love side which is something I know a lot of people connect with as well the love side I'm not going to talk about too much because again that's a personal thing for me and it's going to be personal for everyone else. But for the most part when it comes to love and Freya, you know, you can definitely call to her in aspects of wanting love, seeking love, needing love advice, um, maintaining love, you know, ending love, you know, everything revolving around love go to her with and kind of, you know, bounce those ideas off her and I think you'll be really surprised of how, you know, communicative she is about it. Um, but, you know, definitely a, a very strong aspect of Freya. 
Um, the side of magic, again, is a very hard thing to talk about because this is a very personal thing. You know, it requires a lot of research, a lot of time and dedication. And as I've said in the past, I'm, I'm not sure how comfortable I am talking about the deeper levels of magic understanding because it, there's, it, there's so many variables and inconsistencies across you know, Norse paganism that it's really hard to, you know, definitively talk about. But I have definitely been uh, practicing my, you know, deeper levels of meditation, um, trance work, using drums to achieve some level of trance, um, you know, to reach, you know, not just meditate, not just clear the mind, but able to, you know, spin the mind in a way that allows it to, allows you to connect on a deeper level with, you know, the gods, the land, and everything around us. This story comes from Grizz or Norse Pagan Ranger on Instagram. I really never gave much thought into the female goddesses. However, my girlfriend, on the other hand, is a devout Freya follower and has told me not to ignore her or the other goddesses, but I have always associated the goddesses with more women, and I have been more focused on the gods like Thor, Odin, Tyr, and Freyr. But recently I've been seeing her in a lot but recently I've been getting to see a lot of signs from Freya, around to the point where I cannot ignore them anymore. For example, working and living in a state park, I see a lot of wildlife including red-tailed hawks, but falcons are not common in Georgia, even though both of our predominant sport teams are named after them. Here recently, within the last month or so, I've been seeing one or more every day. I've had them follow me along on my hikes, and I've had them land extremely close to me, and I've also found a skeleton of one. And there's this feral bobtailed cat that shows up at my house now, and I'm not a cat guy at all, but it seems like to me then it won't leave me alone, so I named her Valkyrie. And then she started bringing me small little gifts, such as the lizards and small little chipmunks, and leaves them in front of my altar to the gods on almost a weekly basis. So after being seeing these signs, I cannot deny that my girlfriend is right, and I need to decided to celebrate Freya and make more offerings in her name. And on our spring bloat, I'm looking forward to bringing more of her into my future. So um, once again, we get to see that idea of the connection with nature. Um, but I did want to focus a little bit more on the cat thing, because the cat as we've seen in the research video, the cat thing is so small. Um, literally in the Prosetta, there is one mentioning of the cat chariot, but still the cat has become such a powerful symbol of Freya. I mean, even in that video, you saw me, you know, kind of making fun of my own cat that decided to hop in the video. But it seems like the majority of people in the faith have decided that cats are tied to Freya, um, you know, even just from that small passage in the Prosetta, but also just in life. Um, so this idea of the cats bringing small little gifts, you know, cats are, you know, adorable creatures. And as he mentioned the story, they're, you know, sometimes feral, but they still have this tendency to bring a small little presence. We may not want them, but they still have this inside of themselves. You know, they, sometimes cats are not the most affectionate creatures in the world. Um, and so sometimes all you get is these small little gifts, but cats are complicated. So one thing that definitely came from my research into this video, but also my own natural explorations into venerating and honoring Freya, um, I have discovered, and a lot of it comes from that um, passage within the Poetic Edda, the uh, Voluspa and Skama, that small Voluspa where it talks about how the Oter guy made her a shrine and that is what got her attention and then of course Snorri even talks about how she's a really easy goddess to reach um, and if you're just seeking you know immediate help it seems like she's a really good one to reach out to and I find this to be quite true in my personal practice as well as, as with talking with other people um, but this aspect of building something for her is something I've definitely attached to um, so recently in the previous gatherings I've gone to I've definitely been building things for Freya to try to connect with her on a deeper level and it's definitely seems to be working out quite well so I'll definitely try to put some of the footage I didn't get a lot of it of when I was actually building these things for her um, but at the southern gathering we had in Georgia we actually started carving a god pole to her um, so Heath and the community started carving that and then I assisted and cut myself. It's healing quite well um, But um, she definitely took some blood from me for that. I actually have this here I was planning on working for that for this video But the timing just hasn't worked out, but I didn't intend on bringing that out more But we definitely dedicated a large piece of wood to carving an idol to her. I mean shoot even I did that again to <laughs> Very little success. I started doing that with us here. So that that thing of building something for her it seems to be something that has always been in my mind even before I read that Voluspa and Skama building something for her seems to be very important. So not only did we just carve a god pole to her but um, I wanted to do a guided meditation and kind of start teaching a little bit of the you know trance work I've been kind of learning so I did a thing like a dawn tree ritual kind of like what I did at the Ohio gathering we had. I had a personal one for me where I was like okay I'm gonna try this tree meditation and then um, I did a group guided one for the Southern Gathering in Georgia. And so I act we actually ended up building her almost like a makeshift temple in the woods where we pop 
piled a bunch of trees and pine and then brought we carried that god pole up a mountain to sit it up there to honor her and so that was a very powerful experience in itself to carry that i mean it is probably 50 pounds all the way up this hill place it down do a ritual there and then having to go up retrieve it and carry it all the way back down again for any of you who are actually on the live streams on uh you know my patreon i do talk about my a little bit more of my you know <laughs> my mistakes but also the things i'm trying out in the faith so one of the things that i've been kind of working with is filgia which again i don't know if i feel comfortable enough making a whole video about it but um filgia are you know a sort of animal spirit within norse faith um and i f recently found mine is a turkey <laughs> of all things and so um while i was doing that ritual in georgia a turkey actually was started like gobbling while we began the ritual and then when we actually took up the god pole a turkey flew out of the tree right next to us it was bizarre another gathering i recently got back from was in the ozarks and again we were trying some different things and so we were on a lake and i did another guided meditation you know taking what i learned from the first one and bring it to this one and it went much better like you know i was actually able to help guide people to some deeper levels of meditation um we actually built another shrine for freya there hopefully i can put up some footage but it's also the thumbnail for this video we built another shrine for her there so really building things for her has really helped me connect with freya on a deeper level the last story of Freya that I wanted to share with you comes anonymously, um, and this is a very intimate story, but at the same time, it's one of her most important aspects and the one I see float around the community a lot, so I'll just go ahead and begin. Good evening. My most powerful experience with Freya was this. I am a medically retired soldier, and my wife and I were told that we would most likely never have a child. As I'm having my medical evaluation and preparing for my separation from the military, I'm at my lowest because all I've ever wanted to be was a soldier and a good father. So I was sitting on a mountain in South Korea. I ask a general what I am to do now, and when I am, I feel Freya's presence, and I hear your greatest adventure is about to begin. A few weeks later, my wife calls me at the end of a 24-hour shift and tells me we have to go to the doctor, and when I get home, we find out that she is pregnant. I knew at that moment I was going to have a daughter, and at the highest praise, I was going to give her the name Freya. My Freya will be six years old in a few days, and I have to be home with her almost every day for the last six years, and it has been a new venture almost every single day. Skull. So this is obviously a this is a very powerful story, and I had a couple like this um, as far as like you know Freya fertility stories, and I know a few people within you know Wisdom of Odin community that have been using her to you know have children, and so this is a very important aspect of particularly paganism and you know and especially the Earth and Bone religions is that fertility was a very important thing in pre-Christian Scandinavian societies, and so having rituals and offerings to a particular deity to you know have better chances of having a healthy child were very important, and even now in this moment, modern age if someone is seeking to have a child you know having a child isn't easy you know especially if you get older in life you know it's not always you know smooth sailing to have one so to have a goddess like Freya that you can reach out to that cares and also can help in these moments of you know fertility is so important and so this is definitely one of the aspects of heathenry and of paganism that is very unique as are these fertility deities and it definitely seems like Freya is our fertility deity for the most part in most people's minds so I do believe it is a very important aspect of her. As we get to the end of this video, um, I do once again say that these videos are kind of difficult, and that's why I've done these multiple stages to these, um, because there's a lot of different variables and elements that go into honoring the gods today in this modern age, um, but we definitely want to be informed by the source material, know what we know from the poetic and prose edit, which I of course had in the first video, um, and then in the video like today where we're talking about honoring her in the modern age, it's definitely going more into my personal practice as well as the practice of others. Um, there's no one single way to venerate any one deity within this faith. No one person is going to have 100% the right way. Um, but this is just one of the ways I have found, the multiple ways other people have found that I want to share with you to help you inform your practice. Um, but ultimately, I do hope this video has been helpful for you in connecting with Freya on a deeper level. Um, you know, she's one, as for the goddess' sake, she's one of the easier goddesses to connect with only because. If not only because we know more about Freya, but we do know from the writings as well that she is relatively easy to connect with. And personally, I have found both from the informed material, but also from my personal practice that building things for her really does help draw her attention. But otherwise, it seems like a lot of people try to uh, connect with her through this, you know, courting element I kind of brought up earlier, where, you know, you just kind of 
support her in the way of you know buying her gifts, uh, giving her wine and flowers is a really great way to kind of win her uh, her affection over as well. It seems like a lot of men in the community do have, struggle with connecting with the female deities, um, and I do believe Freya is a really good first one to kind of branch out to. I know we want to connect with you know what feels like us so you know connecting as a, as a male connecting with Odin and Thor and Freyr is going to feel easier um, but remember Odin had to learn magic from Freya so the goddesses have a very important role within the Norse mythos we may not have much information about them but that does not mean that their role is not important and again Odin had to talk to Freya Freya had to teach him something um, but I do hope this video has been helpful to you. I wish you the best of luck in your practices. Um, if you would, down below, share your experiences with Freya. I couldn't share them all. I got dozens of emails. I only was able to share three in this video. And as always, go out there, share your stories on Instagram, on social media, so others know that they are not alone, um, that Norse paganism is growing, and that even the goddess Freya is finding a new home within this modern heathen world. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. And until the haul, Scott. If you like what I do here at the Wisdom of Odin, please consider donating to Patreon. It's the only way I'm able to continue to do this on a weekly level and continue to do all this research and make these kind of videos. Um, so please consider donating there. There's a link down below, but there's a lot of great benefits down there too. Um, at the lowest here, you get access to the Discord community, a judgment-free environment that we also use to plan all of our gatherings. Um, we also have access to community live streams at a different tier. And then at the final tier, you can get your name in the credits and early access videos. But regardless, Regardless, if you cannot support me on Patreon at this time, I thank you for watching these videos, and please be sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But otherwise, until the haul, thank you very much, and skull.